Hello everyone, I am Bharat Singla and welcome to Codeship. Here you will find everything to learn and master competitive programming. So you know the drill with YouTube. If you have not subscribed yet, then make sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss any of the future videos. Great. Hey guys, welcome to the second video on the playlist on trees and graphs. Today let's talk about terminology in graph theory so you can smoothly comprehend any graph problem and you can talk graphs. So without wasting any further time, let's jump straight in. So there are a lot of things to be covered in this video so I have listed them down briefly and the first thing to cover are nodes and edges. So in a graph anything that is being connected are the nodes and whatever is connecting them are the edges. Right, so I won't be elaborating them any further because I have already done them in the previous video and they are universal terminology. So I wanted that to get out of the way, right? So that's why I explained it in the at the start because they are applicable and used in any form of a graph. Trees, graphs or any whatever you want to call them. You have nodes and edges everywhere, right? So this is the universal standard generic terminology and now let us move on to some tree terminology right so terms specific to a tree so remember a tree is a graph that has n nodes and n minus 1 edges right and has basically no cycles so what is cycles and all we'll discuss somewhere down the lane in this video itself but let me quickly draw a tree and let's discuss about the terms used in tree great so this is the tree that i am using and here there are some special nodes so the first is this one right this one is known as the root of the tree so the top one the one you define as the king the one who holds all the priority is the root node and then who are at the lowest level who are the deepest in the tree and basically have no children right so we'll be discussing what children are as well so these nodes 8 9 5 6 10 11 right they are all child nodes Sorry, they are all leaf nodes. Right. So, getting the feeling of why it's called a tree as well. So, you have the root node at the top and you have the leaf nodes at the bottom. So, there are also some terminologies that work with respect to with respective to one node and the other. So, for a given node, say node 2. Node 1 is its parent. Right. So, remember that tree is a hierarchical structure. Right. So, a node is related to the other node in some way and the one above it, one level above it is the parent of that node, right? So node 1 is the parent of node 2. Node 4, 5, 6 are called the children of node 2, right? And then you also have 8, right? So 8 could be called as a grandchild of 2 because it's two levels down, right? And 4 and 9 can also be called as a grandchild. Then 10 can also be, uh, sorry, 10 cannot be because it's on the different side. Right, but whatever, whoever are the children of children, they all can be called as the descendants of that node. Right. And whatever's above that, so for node 2, the nodes that are above it, for which node 2 is an is a descendant, are called its ancestors. Right. So I have node, let's say node 5, right. So node 5 has no children, but node 5 has a parent 2 and an ancestor 1. Right. And for example, if I take node 7, so node 7 has 1 as its ancestor, 3 as its ancestor, which is also its parent, and 10 and 11 as its children. Great. So these are the terminologies and getting a feel that it is called a tree because it has a root node, right? And one thing I want to make clear is this form of a tree, the data structure, the tree data structure is actually nothing but the inversion of the natural tree that we see around us. Right, so you have the root at the top and you have the leaf nodes at the bottom. Right, so if you invert this, then you get a tree-like structure. And the, the basically the relation between two nodes is similar to that of a family tree. Right, you have the parent, you have its children, you have ancestors, you have descendants and all. Right, so these are two classifications, some special nodes like the root node, the leaf nodes, and then you have the relation between nodes. Right, so this is the terminology used in trees. So you can be asked find the parent of two or find this all the children of two and so on. Right, or what's the root node or find the sum of all the leaf nodes and all. 
Great. So we have talked about the terminology in trees as well. And remember that all this does not apply to graph, although trees also graph. But this is only possible, the parent-child relation is only possible when it's a hierarchical data structure. Right. So these are only tree-specific terminologies, not related to a general graph. Great. So coming on to types of trees, types of graphs and all. So first, let me talk about a general graph. So let me just quickly draw a graph here. Right, so you have a lot of nodes, a lot of edges, right? You can have something like this as well. Right, so this is a graph. So the first form of graph, the first type of graphs are directed and undirected graphs. This means that if this is node A, this is node B, then the graph is a directed graph. If the edges, if these edges of the graph are directed, meaning that there's only one way path from a node. So you can go from node A to B, but you cannot come back from B to A, right? And then you have undirected graphs, which are simply graphs in which you can travel both ways. So from A, you can come to B and B, you can go to A, right? So this could be a directed graph, right? Something like this, where each edge has a direction associated as well. Whereas an undirected graph is simply a one with no directions and traveling both ways is possible. So the second form of graphs is weighted and unweighted graphs. So remember from the previous video, when I took the example of the map of India, so in that, in real life also, if the cities are nodes, then not all, if the cities are the nodes, then not all the roads are of the same length, right? Some could be 100 kilometers, some could be 1000 kilometer. So these edges could have some value, could have some weight, could have some distance associated as well. So if, this is an unweighted graph, then all edges are same, but there could be some weight like 20, 2, even minus 4, then 6, 0, and whatever is there, right? And it could be negative and 0 as well because they are not always the distance. They are simply weights of edges, right? So this way you have a weighted graph where each edge also has some, some kind of priority associated to it. Whereas an unweighted graph is simply this one where all of them have the same value. Right, so we discussed about weighted and unweighted graphs. We also discussed about directed and undirected graphs. And now we'll also discuss about cyclic and acyclic graphs. So this is a tree, right? This is clearly a tree, but this, this graph, right? This is not a tree and it's pretty clear as well, right? But this graph is a cyclic graph. So we discussed about weighted and unweighted graphs, right? We discussed about directed and undirected graph. And now we are talking about cyclic and acyclic graphs. So this graph contains a cycle and cycle simply means that if you can start from a node, start traversing and come back to it. Like in a tree, this is never possible considering that you visit at least two or more nodes and you do not visit a node again. Like obviously you can go from one to two, then two to four, then again come back to one, right? But still it does not have a cycle because you are visiting node two twice, right? In this case though, you can go from A to this node, from this node to B and from B to A, right? So if there's some kind of a polygonal shape being formed, like here you have triangles being formed or this is also an example of a cyclic graph. Right, so you have a cycle, right? So these are cyclic and acyclic graphs. Trees are, because of their condition of n and n minus one, they are acyclic graphs, right? Great, so we have discussed about all three of them and there's one thing I would like to mention is that a weighted graph, a, an unweighted graph can be converted to a weighted graph by simply adding a weight of one, right? So if I add a weight of one to all of them, to all the edges, Right, then it becomes a weighted graph, each edge has a weight, but because all of them are same, it's essentially unweighted only. Right, similarly, an undirected graph can be converted to a directed one. And this I'm leaving to you as an exercise. You can pause here and here's the solution. All you have to do is simply add edges to both the sides. 
so you can add one edge like this right so this becomes a directed graph and you can also add one back so for each node just replicate invert it and add it right so you have you so now getting the feel that it is in a way directed also but because any ways traveling in both directions is possible so it is unweighted it is undirected and let's leave cyclic graphs here so this is all about the types of graphs in a way this is the types of edges also and now let us discuss few types of trees so the first type of tree is a generic tree right the one that we draw the one i drew but here i am talking about a binary tree so a binary tree is defined as a tree that has at match two children for any node right so this here is a binary tree right because every node has at max two nodes right this node also has two children this node also has two children this also has two children this has only one child this in fact the leaf nodes always have zero children and all right so this is a binary tree you could have a ternary tree that exactly has maximum three children or for a general tree we call it a nary tree right this one though is a binary tree great so now in a binary tree you have different versions as well like you could have a binary search tree so binary search tree there although is a separate playlist on binary trees binary search trees and heaps and all right i'm just briefing you about types of them so you have let's say two here then you have one here right or instead let's start with a bigger one so you have 10 you have 7 you have 12 right then you have 4 you have 8 then you have 11 you have 20 so this is a form of a binary search tree right where for a node all the nodes in its left subtree so again this brings me to a new terminology that is a subtree so if this is the bigger tree this is a subtree as well right the tree for which a specific node is the root like here this becomes the root right it does not have any parent so this becomes the root and for this i can say that this is the subtree of that node right so this is pretty basic a subtree so here for a node all the nodes in the subtree of its left child right so it should be a binary tree as well and in its left child all the nodes in that subtree should be less than or equal to that node's value and all the nodes in the right subtree should be greater than or equal to its value right so for 10 7 4 and 8 are all smaller than 10 and 12 11 20 are all smaller than are all greater than 10 right then for 7 4 is less than 7 and 8 is greater than 7 similarly this follows recursively right so this is a binary search tree which is a binary tree and is also binary searchable right so this the benefit of this tree is to quickly be able to search for a node similar to the binary search algorithm because again you know that one half of the entire tree is useless based on the nodes value so if you want to search for 12 and you are currently at 10 you obviously know that since 12 is greater than 10 it cannot be in the left subtree so you go on the right subtree and you do this recursively this is similar to binary search allowing 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 log and traversals fine so this there are much much more there are heaps there are linked list is also a graph as i mentioned and there are just so many more but to recap i know that was a lot of information to digest so to recap you know about nodes and edges right then in a tree you have the root node which does not have any parent leaf nodes which do not have any children then a node's parent is the one above it in the hierarchy and the ones below it are its children then its descendants and the ones which are maybe two or more levels above are its ancestors right and so on and then you have types of graphs which are weighted if there's a weight associated to an edge or unweighted if there's no and an unweighted can be converted to weighted as well by adding a weight one or in fact any weight preferably one same weight to all of them essentially making it unweighted only but technically it becomes weighted then 
then directed and indirected based on if an edge is directing to some node or if it's bi-directional right and then cyclic and acyclic depending on if you can come back to a node so it forms a kind of a polygonal shape in the graph right then you have types of trees which are binary trees which are binary search trees you can refer to the complete playlist everything is talked about in great detail and there are much much more like heaps you have uh, red black trees you have self balancing trees like trees there are much much more you have trees and there are infinite but they are pretty advanced for now knowing these is enough for you to crack any graph problem this is bharat singla from codechef signing off for now and i will see you next time but before that one thing i really want to mention is that without knowing this because this is really important this if you do not know is an is a handicap right in fact all the videos in this playlist are pivotal and so integral to your learning that without them you cannot even imagine to solve a graph problem if you do not know about trees and graphs themselves from the first video then you completely leave a problem on them right even if you know these terminologies you still won't be able to solve any problem even if you know what are the ways to traverse a graph you still won't be able to solve it even if you know how to store and represent graphs in your code you still be able you won't be able to solve it only when you have solved a problem that means you have reached till the end of the playlist you will be able to solve a problem right so it's almost useless to just stop in between based on the previous playlist i realized from the response that a lot of people just drop off from the first or the second video itself but that isn't correct because again it's a handicap you should be knowing all of them and all of them are really really important concepts in graph theory so i hope you follow along till the end and if you like the video then make sure to hit a like and comment down any queries you have and share it with all your friends whom you think may find it useful this is bharat singla finally signing off for now and i will see you next time